In this tutorial, we're going to use Photoshop CC 2020 to work on Classroom in a Book Chapter 3, which is all about working with selections. Selections are really important in Photoshop because it's how we can separate things from each other, move them around, uh, do some of the other fun stuff. So we're going to be creating this seashell based collage today. So when you're working with selections, uh, I want you to notice a few things. First thing, you can make geometric selections. So, so those are things like the marquee tools. So your selection tools are right here at the top. Click and hold the arrow and you'll see you've got a lot of different types of uh, geometric selections. You also have your freehand selections, which are the ones right below it. So that lasso tool, the polygonal lasso, the magnetic lasso, all work a little bit different. And some tools are going to work better for some things than others. Uh, you have some edge based selections, which are kind of the next ones down. So things like your quick selection tool, which is looking at trying to find that defined edge. It works really well uh, when you've got something that's all the same color. When you've got multiple colors, it has a little bit harder time, especially if you're trying to take something off of a background. Uh, you have things like color based selections, with, which you have with the magic wand which also works really, really well if you've got something that's pretty much all the same color. So it depends on what you're trying to select, what you're trying to do in order to make that process happen. So in order to get started, let's go ahead and go to our file and go open and find that start file for PSD. Now notice with that start file that we're going to have a whole bunch of pieces, but that's definitely not what this end piece looks like. So we're actually going to cut all these individual elements out and move them up and around and practice with quite a few of the different tools. So let's do a file save as. Let's do first initial, last name, underscore, uh, Photoshop, classroom in a book, chapter three, and save it as a PSD. Now with this one, if you've played with Photoshop before and played with layers, this lesson does not use layers. So once you let go of something, it is kind of stuck there. So right now we're really just concentrating on how to use the different types of selection tools. All right, so we've got that saved. First thing we're gonna do is go ahead and use that magic wand tool. So let's come down about the fourth tool down and grab that magic wand. So with the magic wand, it works really well with the color color range. So if we look at this seashell, we can see that uh, it has just one single color pretty much there on the side. I'm going to do a control plus and zoom in. If I hold my shift bar or my space bar as a use my mouse, I can move that area around as well. So you'll see that we've got all of this as one single color. So it's really easy for us to use the magic wand to cut that area out. So let's go ahead and in our options bar up here, we're going to be making a new selection. Our tolerance is 32. That means how close to this color do we need to be? If you want it to be really, really exact, set that tolerance really low. Uh, for this one, because it's all one color, you're in a pretty good shape. So let's go ahead and go over the red background outside. And just with a single click, notice that it grabbed all that red because it was really easy for it to tell where the edges are and what we need to do there. So now, that may or may not be what we want because that allows us to get rid of the red but doesn't necessarily help us move the sand dollar itself. So let's go ahead, you can hit delete and because it is locked, it will automatically want to fill the color. So if that's something, if it does that, make sure your background is unlocked before, otherwise it will go ahead and try and fill it. All right, so let's go ahead and do deselect and D and deselect that guy. And let's go ahead and do our magic wand on the sand dollar itself. Now you notice that a lot of the sand dollar itself, because there's so many color differences, if we were to cut and move this right now, we'll actually lose little bits of that. So we don't necessarily want to use this tool on this one. So let's deselect again, control D. So let's go ahead and grab that quick selection. So we know the quick selection is really good at making selections that are of all similar colors. So I go ahead, I have my enhanced edge turned on, I'm adding to my selection, and my brush is relatively big on this one. Uh, if you're trying to do something really small, really detailed, maybe you just want to quick select these little seed bits, you definitely wouldn't want to use the quick select uh, this big right now. 
All right, so we've got auto enhance on, which made a much better quality, truer object selection. So that part's awesome. We love that. So leave this uh, part of the selection here. So now we need to actually move it. So let's do a control Z and zoom out, or control minus and zoom out, or you can use your zoom tool. I want to go ahead and grab that move tool, which is the top one. And we want to go ahead and move this, since it has the ants, up here over space A. Now because it's on the same layer, once I deselect it, we will not be able to move it back off that background again. So I'll make sure it's where exactly where you want. So if it is, you can click out and let's do a deselect, command D. And notice how now it's part of the whole thing. Let's go ahead and do a control S and say what we've got so far. All right, so that played with some of those items. Now let's go ahead and look at something like this piece of coral. I'll go ahead and use the zoom tool and zoom in to look at that coral. Oh, way too much, control minus. All right, so I've got that piece of coral. So sometimes we just want to get a little bit off. Right now, if I did something like the magic wand, it would get rid of all the white around this, but that's not necessarily what I want to do. So let's go ahead and do the object selection tool which is under quick selection. And we're going to go ahead and drag a selection around this piece of coral. And it's thinking. We don't have to be precise or centered, but it's looking for the edges. So the object selection makes it a relatively easy way to quickly uh, pull something off of the background. So let's go ahead and do a control minus, zoom out and slide this piece with our move tool up over area B. Kind of see the shadow that it cast up there. Let go when we're happy with it. Control D to deselect. And now we have that one. So do a Control S to save what we've got so far. All right, let's look at a few other things we can do to manipulate sections. So how are we going to go ahead and cut out this plate full of shells down here? So let's go ahead and zoom in. Uh, let's hold, turn my scrubby zoom on so it does a little bit differently next time. All right, so how am I going to select this plate of shells? There's a few different ways I can do it because it's got different types of colors. My magic wand and my quick selection aren't necessarily the best tools. So let's go ahead and learn a few tricks. Let's grab our elliptical marquee. Now this one does have a few different tricks in that it is really important the order that you release the buttons. So for this one I'm going to take and drag a oval. Now notice that I missed it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit my space bar and I can readjust and move that. Let go of my space bar. Don't release your mouse. And pull it down with my space bar. Release space bar. Don't release the mouse till you're ready to have it totally perfect. When you love it, it's perfect the way you want then go ahead and let go. And then you will have selected that element. So let's go ahead and view fit on screen so you don't have to zoom out. So a few different tools. We see we've got our dancing ants. Let's go ahead and grab our move tool and move that up. And no, you're not going to get that right the first time. Uh, I can guarantee you it takes a lot of practice to release the keys in the right order. Um, not letting go of the mouse is a huge part of that one. So I'm going to hit D to deselect. Uh, your goal is to get it with as little white around it as possible. I understand sometimes that's not always the easiest thing to do. All right, so let's go ahead and move selections a few other ways. Let's go ahead and grab this muscle down here. So let's go ahead and select with the lasso tool. So let's go ahead with my zoom, go here to my muscle, hold my sh space bar, use my hand to grab that up. All right, so now I am in on that one. Uh, if you're following around in the books, it gives you a whole lot of different uh, elements, things about how to play with the edges of the selection. So definitely read those pages. Let's go ahead and grab our lasso tool. So with our lasso tool, we're going to try and drag around the end of the muscle. We want to trace as accurately as possible, but don't release the mouse button. 
So you're basically doing this freehand. And for me, the lasso is a really hard way to do it. But we do need to learn how to do it. So if we've got to a straight part, you can go ahead and hit Alt or Option. And it'll help you draw straight. So now if you see, we kind of have these perfectly uh, interesting selections. I don't love it. I'm going to do a Control D. I'm going to click here. I'm going to hold that Shift again. Nope, undo. I'm going to click. I'm going to hit Alt and drag. It's not doing it. Okay. So there is one way to go ahead and do this. So what's another way we can select this guy? Maybe we want to uh, try it one more time. So they want us to go ahead and try a different type of lasso later. So we're going to go ahead and try that. Alright, so I'm going to use my lasso, go as close as I can possibly. grab that muscle. This one is really hard for me. I can never get things to work quite the way I want them to. So now let's go ahead and hopefully yours looks better than mine. Let's go ahead and rotate that selection. So let's go view fit on screen. And let's go ahead to drag our muscle to the shadow box part marked D. So I'm grab my move tool and grab him, move him up. But you'll see it needs to be rotated so let's go edit. Come down here to transform. And let's go ahead and tell him to rotate. So we can do it by hand or we can do uh, we can have it use the 90 degrees. So let's go ahead and do rotate. And you'll see you're going to get the grabber bars. If you go over the edges, you do get the curved arrow, which will allow you to spin that. Since we're still selected, we can still slide that. You can move it back and forth with your arrow keys up and down until you get where you want it. Uh, notice I should have done a better selection because you can still see part of that background that I left on there. Alright, so if I'm happy with it, we're good. Let's do Control D to deselect. So if I were to try and go through right now and delete this part, it would end up making a basically a hole in the background. So I don't want to go ahead and do that. M make a better selection before you move things. Works much better. And how do you do that? I like to do it with some of the other tools. So lasso for me is not always my favorite tool, but you do need to know it's there. Alright, so let's go ahead and scroll in on this other Nautilus shell. And let's go ahead and grab the polygonal lasso instead, or the magnetic lasso. So with the magnetic lasso, it will automatically find the edges for you. So let's go ahead and start here. And I'm going to just drag along the edges. And notice how it's putting those anchor points in as I go. So as long as you are pretty close, the magnetic lasso can work really well for helping to create those selections. Go nice and slow. If I have to, I've got that one that's kind of off over there. Go ahead and close it. I can, if I want to add to, I'm going to go here and add to, and say I want to put this section back in. Hit enter. So I've got most of it. Just control plus and zoom back in. So I want to put this section back in. Oh, now I grabbed too much, so I can do minus. Say so take that part out. So it's just a matter of getting it adjusted to the point. So you always can add and subtract till you get your selections just perfect. 
Uh, let's go ahead and add to this selection, otherwise we're going to have a piece missing. So now that brought that over. Now here I've got a little bit too much, so let's take it away and go along here. So now I've got a pretty good pretty good selection. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and let's go ahead and move it up to where it goes. So I'm going to do my control minus, grab my move tool, and grab that and put them up over here on E. Alright, if you notice my layer all together has been shifted, so let's go ahead and push enter. Okay, deselect that. Let's grab this layer and put it back over here. Alright, I can use my arrows to nudge that back and forth. Alright, so we want to do one more thing. We want to go ahead and add these screws up to uh, just kind of a decorative element on the corner. So we're going to go ahead and select that from a center point. Let's find that elliptical marquee up here at the top. And we can do a couple things. If we just drag, we'll get a circle, but that might not be what we want to do. Control D to do that. So I want you to go ahead and hit Alt as you do it. And notice how it's going to draw that from the center out. So instead of drawing from the edge, you're drawing from the center. But that might not be what you want either, so Control D. So hit Alt and Shift and you'll get a perfect circle. Now if you let go of Alt, oh, so I've got Alt and Shift. If I let go of my mouse, uh, and leave Alt and Shift. Now I can use my arrow keys to adjust that up and down until I get exactly what I want. Or you can reselect again. Do Control D, Control Zoom in a bunch more. This is where you have to be a little bit of a perfectionist. So I'm going to hit my Shift and Alt. Oh, Shift and Alt. Now if I hit spacebar, I can move it down a little bit. So I'm using three fingers at once, basically. I'm going to let go of my spacebar. I'm going to let go of my mouse key. Oops, and I didn't get it quite right. So let's do it one more time. All right, shift alt. Grab my spacebar, bring it down. go space, let go of use my fingers, let go of my mouse, and then look at the others. Still not in love with it. One more try. Okay, I've got my selection. Alright, so let's go ahead, control minus, zoom out. So let's go ahead and take our move tool and grab that. We're going to notice that that screw is ginormous compared to the rest of our other elements. So we want to kind of keep those in proportion. So let's go ahead and transform the scale. Let's go edit. Come down here to transform. And let's go ahead and do scale. So we want to make it about 40% of the size that it's at right now. So right now if we look at our scale, we can go toward, we can go smaller, and you see your percentages are changing up there at the top. So we want to go ahead and take it to about 40%. So I'm, I can just type in 40. When I'm happy, got it where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and move it over to this side. I'm going to zoom in so I can see a little bit better. Move it. Now don't let go of your selection because you're going to need that screw to make a few more screws on the picture. So now while it's selected I'm going to hit Alt and I'm going to go over my image. See how my arrows turn into two arrows? I'm going to click and hold and drag it over. So now I've got two different screws. If I don't like it where it's at I can use my arrows to nudge it. And let's go ahead and repeat that for the other two. So I'm Alt, get my double arrows, bring it up. Alt, bring my double arrows, bring it up. Alright, so now I can't move these because they are not selected. So make sure you have them where you want them before you do anything else. Let's do a control S and save. And we're almost done 
uh, with this unit. Now we just need to crop it off. So let's go ahead and grab our crop tool. So we want to go ahead and crop. Now notice how it automatically went to the selection I have, which I don't want. So I'm going to do a control D. And now let's go to crop. So it's taking in my whole picture. You're going to see you get these crop handles. If you just drag them, you can change it. So let's go ahead and go to the bottom, grab that one, bring it up. That's up to you. Uh, because it's got a little bit of a drop shadow, I would definitely make sure you leave a little bit of that white on the edges. And we want to make sure that the cropped pixels go away forever. So once you delete them, they're not there anymore. So let's go ahead and when you're happy with it, hit the check mark and you have created a shell collage with a bunch of selections. So you've used a lot of different selection tools in this one. You're going to find your favorites. Some are just take a lot of practice, uh, but the better your selections, the cleaner your selections, a lot of easier it's going to be to do some of the other work that you want to do in Photoshop going forward. So make sure you go ahead and save this and submit it to Canvas. And that is all for Classroom in a Book, Chapter 3.